In this video, I'd like to walk through the process of trying to engrave a logo or some kind of geometry into a flat surface. I've also gone ahead and added a slot here so we can go ahead and use the skill that we learned in the last one. The one thing I want you to notice about the geometry that I have is it's still just 2D geometry. I haven't actually extruded it into the part or anything to create a feature. And the way we're going to do this, I don't need to. Alright, let's go ahead and go into the cam tab and create our normal setup. So let's go ahead and take care of the slot operation since that's the process we should already know. And the first thing we know is we need to inspect the part and figure out what that distance is from one side of the slot to the other. So I'll grab my measure tool and I'm going to pick these two flat lines. Okay, so an eighth of an inch. I'm going to use the eighth inch tool, tool one, to go ahead and engrave or to slot that entire gear around there. But I want to see if I can do it in one pass. So I'm going to grab my measure tool and from the red down to the yellow, I have 0 .0625. So remember, our rule is with traditional milling, things that are not adaptive, we've got a 50% of the tool's diameter for step over and 50% of the tool's diameter for depth of cut. And that's our maxes. So 0 .0625 just happens to be half or 50% of eighth inch. So we'll go ahead and go to cam, 2D milling, and slot. We'll go ahead and pick our tool number one, our flat eighth inch end mill. We'll go into our geometry tab and I'm going to pick the bottom of the gears profile and the bottom of the inside gears profile. We'll come to the heights tab and there's nothing that I really want to do here because um, stock top and model top are in the same location and I do want it to go down to my selected contours. We'll come to the passes tab and I don't need multiple depths for this since I could do it in one pass. Other than that, I'm going to leave everything else in this tab alone. On my linking tab, the only thing I'm going to mess with right now is changing the default for the ramp angle. We'll go ahead and change that to the 6 degrees that we've been using. And I'll go ahead and say OK, and let's simulate it. Outstanding. I couldn't be happier with that. That's done exactly what I needed to do. It's gone ahead and cleaned that entire ring out. Okay, so now let's get to the new one. We want to go ahead and engrave all of this geometry into the top face, and I'm going to do that with my tool 11, or my tapered end mill. So I'm going to come to 2D Milling drop down, and I'm going to go ahead and select Trace this time. The trace tool works kind of like the slot and the contour tool, where it allows me to trace a path, but instead of compensating to the left or right like the contour does, trace will actually give me the opportunity to go right down the middle of it, no compensation, just like the slot does. So I'm going to go ahead and select trace. I'm going to change my tool to my tool 11. I'll go to my geometry tab and I'm going to start picking my curves. Now because this is a closed loop then it's picking the entire thing for me. So I can go ahead and pick this one, this one, and then we'll do the three in the middle. Okay, excellent. Now what do we got? So one thing that you may notice on the heights tab is that I've lost both the top height and the bottom height. Those aren't even something that I can control here. Alright, well let's go to the next tab. So we'll go to the passes tab. I need to go ahead and assign some type of depth, and I've got two ways to do it. I can go ahead and put in a negative axial offset, or I could actually come into my stock to leave. I could go ahead and leave nothing on the walls, because I don't want to compensate left or right, and I could just put a negative value, something like negative 10 thousandths on the floor, and that'll actually engrave into the part. But rather than use stock to leave, I'm going to go ahead and use this new one for the axial offset. It can be used to shift the selected curve up or down the spindle's axis. So we'll go ahead and say negative, and I'm going to do a ten thousandths of an inch. This is where I also get to control to whether I want to go inside, left, or right, or whether I want to do center compensation. So I'm just going to allow the tool to go right down the middle of the line, no matter how deep I go. Then on the last time, there's nothing for me to do, so I'm going to leave all that alone. I'll go ahead and say OK. I'm already happy with the slot operation, so I just want to verify that the trace is working. So I'm just going to click on Trace. I'll go to Simulate, and we'll play it. All 
Awesome. So the red that's actually being exposed right now is the surface of my regular part. Um, so it really does create a V groove with the tool that I have. Um, right now I'm just exposing that top surface. Okay, great. The one thing that you may want to do is actually turn off your sketch once you've picked everything. So I'm going to close, go back to the model tab, and I'm going to turn off sketch 3. And that doesn't actually affect the geometry of the tooling itself. So the operation is still going to be fine. So now I don't actually have to look at all that geometry, all that sketch work that was there, and I can still run everything. So now I'll go ahead and click on Setup, and we'll run the entire thing. Excellent. That's exactly what I want. You may notice when you do yours that it may not do it in the exact same order that you clicked things. It's trying to optimize the distance that the tool has to travel. So back in the trace tool or the trace operation, on the passes tab, you have the option for preserve order. And if you click on preserve order, then it will machine it in the exact same order that you picked everything. All right, so hopefully you now can go ahead and add some type of 2D geometry or some kind of engrave to your parts.